Hello, welcome to another interesting lesson of literature, appreciation of literary texts, GC or in level. I am sure you must be enjoying these lessons and gaining an immense knowledge through lessons about your poems, text and the novels. So today also we have an interesting poem for us to do. That is the second poem in your syllabus for the first term. Do you know what is the poem I'm going to talk about? Okay, let's look at it. Farewell to Barn and Stack and Tree by A. E. Houseman. Houseman is an English poet. He titled this poem Farewell to Barn and Stack and Tree. When you're analyzing a poem, you always have to pay attention to the title. If you look at this title, you feel there is something unusual in this title. Farewell to barn and stack and tree. So he is bidding farewell to barn, stack and tree. Are they living things? No, they are not living things. But the speaker is saying farewell, goodbye, or bye to these inanimate objects, barn, stack, and tree. The moment you see the word barn and stack, it creates a visual picture in your mind. That poem is referring to the agricultural farming background. Okay, with that little introduction, Let's go to our poem and let's read the poem and enjoy it first. That is the most important thing that you enjoy what you are reading. Let's go to read the poem Farewell to Barn and Stack and Tree and this has several stanzas. Let, let's look at the first stanza. Farewell to Barn and Stack and Tree Farewell to Seven Show Terence Look at your last at me, for I come home no more. Stanza 2. The sun burns on the half moon hill. By now the blood is dried. And Morris amongst the hay lies still. And my knife is in his side. My mother thinks us long away. Tis time the field were mown. She had two sons at rising day. Tonight she will be alone. And here's a bloody hand to shake. And oh man, here's goodbye. Will sweat no more on sight and rake my bloody hands and I. I wish you strength to bring you pride and a love to keep you clean. And I wish you luck come lamestide at raising on the green. Long for me the rick will wait and long will wait the fold and long will stand the empty plate and dinner will be cold. Okay, so that is the end of our sixth stanza poem. What do you think about this poem? Is it describing something? Or is it giving some instructions? Or is it narrating a story? Yes, I'm sure by now you you must have understood, it is telling us a story. Let's see what is this story. Is it a pleasant story or very unpleasant story? Uh, who are the characters in this story? Who are the good characters and who are the bad characters? And what is happening to the characters? Who are the main characters? Do they have a happy end? or do they end in sadness? So let's look at the poem one more time so you can get a better idea of it. 
as I said very, at the very beginning, he's bidding farewell to Barn Stack Country, farewell to Seven Show, Terence, look your last at me, for I come home no more. Terence is the only, a, only the person he speaks. Tell him to look last at me. The sun burns on the half mourn hill. By now the blood is dried. The moor is amongst the hay lies still and my knife is in his side. Here we have a clue of what is happening in the story. My mother thinks us long away. Tis time the field were mourn. She had two sons at rising day. Tonight she will be alone. So we have the third character coming in, the mother. The speaker is concerned about the mother too. And here's a bloody hand to shake. And oh man, here's goodbye. We'll sweat no more on sight and rake. My bloody hands and I. Here you are getting a little clue of understanding the story and what has happened in the story. I wish you luck, come Lammastide, at racing on the green. Here you find the speaker is wishing something to someone. I hope you understand to whom he is wishing. Long for me the rick will wait and long will wait the fold and long will stand the empty plate and dinner will be cold. S here we, the speaker is focused into the home of our hero. So we read twice and we have come to understand certain facts about the story and you come to understand that is blood body, knife. So as you understand in this farming background something had happened, something not good, something had gone wrong and someone, our speaker is telling farewell, goodbye. You can say goodbye in the morning, bye bye at home expecting that you are coming back home and after a few certain hours that you are returning home. But at the same time if you are abroad and if you are leaving your job or if you are going for a tour, not going to come for a longer period, also you can say goodbye, farewell. So in which sense is our speaker telling goodbye in this poem? So we are going to understand the more of this poem by looking at more details. As I told you before, this poem carries a storyline. So we are going to see to what tradition of poetry this poem is related to. So there is a set of poems called ballad. So we tell this poem has ballad features. Okay, ballad is a kind of poem. So remember children, it's a kind of poem and this mm, poem has certain features of ballad. So let's look at what is a ballad. What is a ballad? Ballad is a simple poem that tells a story. So our poem is also telling us a story. So that is in that way it qualifies to be a some association of ballad. It tells us a story. The, in ballads the authors are unknown. Of course here we have author Hausman, uh, but in ballads authors are unknown. They are written in simple language. Even our poem is in written in simple language, you understand it. Contains dialogue, can easily set to music and a whole group of people can join together and sing. So that was the time when people got together, uh, composed poems and then sang them together. 
when uh, reading and writing was only restricted to the certain class of people. So popular form of entertainment for the general public was through the ballads, songs written by simple people. So that is what uh, this sentence is. They are written in simple language, contains dialogue. So when a poem has dialogue, it has some dramatic effect. One person is asking a question, another person is answering. So we also have a certain feature of dialogues in this poem also because our protagonist, the main speaker is talking to someone, he's talking to his friend. Dialogue can easily set to music and a whole group of people can join together and sing. So that is the feature of ballad. They could use simple musical instrument that is available in the village and add some music and play together. So it was a kind of a community singing in this simple lives of the ancient time. So that was ballad. They also have a regular rhyming scheme. So if you look at the poem Farewell also we have a rhyming scheme and they are centered on themes such as love, heroism, betrayal and tragic death. Death is normal but tragic death is what is we don't expect. So we don't want to say that somebody died under tragic circumstances. We would say he died of a natural death. So this ballads has this common basic emotions of people. Love, heroism. Heroism is something that they always upheld in the ancient times. Those who go to battlefield, those who sacrifice their lives and those who rescue their community from uh, ferocious animals. And betrayal. Betrayal was uh, not very much common among the common people, but they must have heard many stories of betrayal of the queens and kings and their <coughs> lords and all other generals and of this high class people. So we under come to understand what is a ballad. Ballad is a simple poem that tells a story. The authors are unknown and they were not written and they were passed to generation to generation by oral tradition. Um, and they were composed in simple language and they had con dialogues. These dialogues could be sometimes acted in between the song. So there was dramatic aspect. Can easily set to music and whole group of people join together. So there was a community participation in this kind of ballad singing. They also have a regular rhyming scheme. So they were rhyming, so they were um, be nice to hear. They are centered on the themes such as love, heroism, betrayal and tragic death. So tragic death is what we are going to concentrate on in our story. Let's go further. Yes, we already understood. I am sure by now you have guessed what has happened in the story. But let's go to this basic question and try to understand this. What is this poem about? Co you come to understand this poem is about a um, young man telling his friend, by now you know the name of the friend, Terence, to look at me and he say goodbye. First he told goodbye to the trees. Our title is telling farewell to barn and stack and tree, you know. But later on he say goodbye to his friend. So what is this poem about? This poem is about one person saying goodbye to the other person, supposed to be his friend. So then further we come to understand this about an incident that happened in a family. So this is a family incident, not a pleasant incident. Families are very important and a lot of happiness, sadness, excitement can take place in a family and we grow up 
to become a full citizens in a family. So this is an incident that has happened in the family. When you have come to understand the story, you will be feeling very disappointed of what has happened to this family because of this one incident. So it's about an incident about a family. Who is involved in it? Okay, there is there are two brothers and the rest of the people. So we have two brothers. What are their jobs? We set it very clearly from the very at the very beginning. Barn, stack and tree, direct reference to the agricultural background, rural background, farming community. So definitely, even the accident took place while they were working. So definitely, both of their jobs are, they are farmers, so they are cultivators. Who is the speaker? So speaker is one of the brothers. That is how we have to interpret it. Speaker is one of the brothers speaking to his close friends and narrating the tragedy that has befallen on him unexpectedly. So I jump to the end. What happened at the end? So now we have established there is a murderer. A murder has taken place within the family among the two brothers. So we come to understand at the end, it's a murderer, person who murdered the other brother, leaving. And this is his confession. This is his feeling of sorrow. This is his feeling of regret that he's voicing in this poem. What do you feel about the murderer? Now when you hear the word murder, murderer, these are the words that you don't want to pronounce or linger and think about it. But in the context of this poem, they, they are very much different. What do you feel about the murderer? In the poem at the end, you, you may be feeling different about the murderers than what you hear in the media and the newspapers. So let's come to that question later on to see your real feeling about the murderer. Then we have other question, what is the condition of the mother? Stanza six, five and six, we had the reference to mother. So what do you think the mother is feeling? One son is killed in the field, other son is leaving. And mother is only at home. There is no mentioning of a, of a father. So what do you think about the condition of a mother? So let's answer all this question later on. Let's move on. There is a very fam famous similar story that is found in the Bible. That is called the story of Cain and Abel. So Cain and Abel, two were brothers. And they too were farmers. Very similar to our story. Cain and Abel, they too were brothers, elder brother and younger brother, and they were farmers. But due to certain reason, Cain became jealous of his younger brother Abel. As a result of this jealousy, he killed his other brother. Ab Abel, Cain became jealous and he killed his brother. So Cain to kill his brother was jealous. So what do you think the reason of one brother killing the other brother in our poem, Farewell to Barns, Stack and Trees? Can you see any similarities? Was one brother jealous of the other one? Is that the reason for him to kill the other brother? So this is one famous story taken from the Bible, story of Cain and Abel. So let's try to answer these questions and try to explain the poem in our own words. 
we are going to the poem one more time to understand it better and get the story better so that you definitely will feel what is happening in this story. Let's look at the first stanza one more time. Farewell to barn and stack and tree. So very unusual. You don't say farewell to your dogs or your cats or maybe you don't say farewell to your cars or motorcycle. You always say farewell to bye bye to people. But why this person is telling farewell to barn and stack and tree? Farewell to seven, seven show. So this is the place where he lives. Seven is a um, river in London. So Seven Shore is like their farm was close to this river. So he's telling farewell to even his town. Farewell to Morocco, farewell to Borel. It is something like that. Then he's coming to a person. After saying farewell to inanimate objects like barns, stack and tree, and seven shows, he come, he me, will say he meets with this person, Terence. So he's telling, telling the Terence, look your last at me. Look at me for the last time. So that means he has already decided, I am not going to see Terence anymore. My friend, my buddy, I'm not going to see him anymore. And I had better to say him goodbye for I come home no more. So he's very directly telling Terence, I am not going to come home anymore. So he is telling only to Terence goodbye. He told goodbye to this inanimate object and to the village. And now he's telling it to the Terence, only one friend he's telling goodbye. Now we get the details of his confession. The sun burns on the half moon hill. It's noon time, sun burns, the sun is shining. Uh, it's uh, hot on the half moon hill. Half moon, like half cut, half yielded harvest. They were working since in the morning till the incident happened. Incident happened, they cannot continue. Reaping the harvest, Farmers are waiting to reap the harvest, whether sun or rain or hot or dry or cold. When it's the right time, they reap the harvest. They are ambitious to do that, but our speaker, our protagonist, had to stop it halfway, half mourn. In a sense, their lives, two young people's lives, brothers' lives, were half mourn. Their lives were cut. They were stopped halfway. The sun burns on the half moon hill. By now the blood is dried. Oh, we have a very clear clue. Blood is dried. So there was a blood shed in the field. A blood shed in the field. Work was stopped. Blood is dry because it's sunny now. It's maybe midday. So we can guess the murder had taken place sh very shortly after they began to work. Maybe they started work at 10, 8 o'clock in the morning and they work for about one and a half hours. After that only this rift between brothers took place and this tragic incident happened. Now the blood is dried and Morris, here we have the name of the brother, Morris is the brother. Morris amongst the he lies still. Okay, somebody is lying still. No movements. Logs can lie still. Stones can lie still. Branches can lie still. But not a person. Morris amongst the he lies still. Then we get the other important information and my knife is in his side. Knife in his side. Knife is side of a person. What does that indicate? The poet is very indirect. He's not telling us it directly. A knife is by the side of the person who is not moving. So indirectly poet is telling us 
one person, the person named here as Morris is not moving. There is a knife beside him. So something has happened to him. So we get the picture of the murder here with these words of blood, knife, and let's go to the rest. Now our protagonist think of the other person who is living closest to him. So that is why he said, my mother thinks us long away. So he has this possessive pronoun, my mother. So he makes it my mother is mine. My mother thinks us long away. Mother is thinking she's happy at home. She's attending to her various work at home. My mother thinks long away. She thinks that as usual, we have gone to our farm and we are working. And she may be also feeling happy because they are reaping the harvest. And take into the notice, the speaker is telling my mother because mother is someone who is closer to him. Mother is someone who really loves, who, re who he really appreciates. So that's what he said, my mother thinks us long away. Tis time the field were mourn. Tis is an expression of Old English. It is, it's time the field were mourn. So mother knows very well, it is time the fields are cut, grain is cut, harvest is gathered. So mother is in a happy contented condition. He has, she has two strong sons to carry out the work of the farms, bring harvest to the home, bring income to the home. And this mother may be dreaming of bringing two beautiful girls as his daughter-in-laws also to these two young strong sons. So mother thing, mother knows that feels it's time to feel the moan. She had two sons at rising day. When the, when the day begins, she had two strong sons with all sort of potentials, young people who could manage the farm, who could do everything in the farm, who could manage the other workers, manage the selling, manage the income, manage the money. An inheritance, a pride of mother, she had two sons at rising sun. They may have had their breakfast with mother in the morning. Tonight, she'll be alone. But tonight, both sons are not returning home. She will have no son figure at home tonight. Tonight is going to be a long night for her. She's going to wait and wait, wait, till they come back, until someone bring this sad news to the mother, what has happened to her two sons. Tonight, she'll be alone. He's showing to his friend and hears bloody hands to shake. Terence, shake hand with me for the last time. He has to tell Terence, Terence, let's shake hand. Let's hug each other. The protagonist has to tell, request Terence. It looks like Terence is also shocked by this incident. So he is also not aware what is to be done at this moment. When our protagonist, our speaker is telling, Terence, here's bloody hands. Bloody here, again we used. Something unpleasant, something not good. Blood denotes death. Blood hand to shake. He's telling, shake my hand. In a normal day, as they meet, they would greet each other very warmly. Nobody has to say, let's shake hand. But at this moment, he has to say, Terence, shake my hand because I am going to go. I am going 
I'm not going to come to see you anymore. And here's the bloody hand. Bloody hand, he's telling my hands are blood. Maybe there could have been visible blood on our speaker's hand. Or he's showing his mental condition. He's guilty through this word bloody hand because the speaker himself know very well he is a murderer, unexpected person in the society. And oh man, here's goodbye. He says, and oh man, here's goodbye. So other times you, his goodbye was very happy. Goodbye, but here is he's sighing, he's saying, and oh man, here's the goodbye. We will sweat no more on sight than rake. So he's reminding the interesting cooperative togetherness the acts they did together and they enjoyed, which brought them pride and happiness, they would sweat by scythe and rake. These are tools that they use in agriculture. My bloody hands and I, again, he focuses us and tells us his guilt. My bloody hand and I, is he feeling happy about himself? with this several reference of bloody hand and I, I don't think that he's feeling happy about himself. He must be feeling so terrible about himself. He must be feeling so guilty about what he has done this morning at the farm. I wish you, so to whom is he wishing? He's wishing to his friend Terence. So he also has a wish for his friend when he's saying goodbye. So it looks like that he is a very good friend and they may have been very close buddies, maybe a co-worker or maybe a close friend from the small days. I wish you strength to bring you pride. He's telling you will have, you will get strength to bring you pride. You will work accordingly so that there will be no incident in your life to become shameful like myself. Today I am in shame because of my act but I believe that there will be no incident in your life that will come to bring you guilt like myself instead. I wish you strength to bring you pride. So his wish for Terence is that you are a person or you will be a person who will do the right things and bring pride to your parents or to your community and allow to keep you clean. He says, I wish you have a love to keep you clean. What, what does he mean by love to keep you clean? He, he, he seems to be telling that the love I had in my life so far wasn't very clean. It was not without problems. It had problems. But he wished for Terence to have a love, love which is cherishing, which is uplifting, which is giving you a comfort and love to keep you clean. And I wish you luck. The luck is what was lacking in this main character as well as what lacked in this family. I wish you luck, he's saying. I wish you all the best. I wish you all the best for your future endeavors. I wish you a bright future. Luck would come. All what you are doing will be successful, which did not happen to me. I wish you luck. Come Lammastide. Now he is a reference to a festival where young people go and enjoy. It's a harvest festival which usually happen in the summer. A Lammastide harvest festival 
of young people. There are young people who would come and enjoy in various games and activities very similar to single and Tamil New Year out of the festival. Even out of the festival, which you are going to celebrate in few weeks time, it is the young people who are going to enjoy it must. So he says, I wish you luck come Lammastide all racing on the green. Come Lammastide all racing on the green. He's imagining the Lammastide festival that is to come in the next season. All racing in the green. Let's let me wish you that you will enjoy the next Lammastide festival with all its festivity and fun, frolic and love, companionship, which the speaker is going to base. So he has three wishes, strength, love to keep you clean, wish you luck to enjoy the community festival of Lammastide. So we came to understand the major part of the poem. But there's still other things that we have to know about this poem. I'm sure by now you have got the story line of the story, story line of the poem. We said no, this poem is written very close to the ballad. So ballads has a storyline. No? So this poem also has a storyline. Shall you recall what is the storyline? Okay, now we have uh, got the basic idea of the poem. And I'm sure that many of you had got the storyline in this poem. I said no at the very beginning of this poem, it had, or it is very much close to a ballad. Ballad contains a story. So what is the storyline in this poem? So you got the main character one brother, he's telling farewell and very particularly he's telling farewell first to the inanimate objects like trees, barn and everything. Then later on you find he's telling farewell to inanimate objects because he doesn't want to meet any person. So this is the psychology of a murderer, psychology of the convict, psychology of a guilty person. He does not want to meet people and engage in interaction. So rather than telling to people, I am leaving, I am running away, he preferred to first to say to his farm, farm which has become part and parcel of his life for all these long years. Then he come to his friend, meet the friend, Terence and te tell the Terence goodbye and tell him what has happened. And then he tells his wish to Terence. I hope you will have a clean love, you will have a clean life. And then at last he's telling, I hope in the next festival of Lammastide you will enjoy rest of the villages. And then he talks about his mother and he's telling my mother. So he's feeling so sorry about his mother and he knows the condition of mother and he imagines how mother receives this piece of sad information about what happened to two brothers. So he tells about it in a very metaphorical way of telling the plates are going to be empty. So that is the basic idea of the poem and the storyline. I'm sure by now you know about it. So let's look at the other literary devices. Now, as we said already, literary devices help us to understand the poem as well as to make it memorable and interesting. What is the language of the poem? Was it hard? Was there any hard words? No, language is simple, day-to-day -day language the poet has used. And what is the setting? By now you know it's a setting, it's agricultural setting, a farmland. Good. Let's look at these uh, words in understanding the setting. We already talked about it. Now these are the words 
poet used to give us a clear picture of the setting of the poem. Barn. Barn is a place where you keep harvested extra grains or where you keep your uh, garden tools. Stack. Stack is a heap. Tree. Half mown hill. Half cut harvest or half cut grass. It was half cut. It was not fully cut. Hay, you understand, the dried parts of the paddy or any other crops. Field is the open garden. Scythe is kind of a tool that is used um, as a farm equipment. Rake is also the same. Lamestide, I told you before also, is a harvest festival like our Singhala Urudu Savya. Uh, green, uh, rick, again a heap of uh, hay or something, any other agricultural product. And fold, fold can be again um, a group of animal or a place where fodder or water is kept for the animal. So these words actually help us to understand the setting. So we already know the setting of the poem is in, a, in an agricultural farming background. Speaker, you can tell the answer. Speaker is the murderer. Maybe we'll, we'll tell elder brother who killed the younger brother. Speaker and format, how it is put it in your paper. So it comes to us in stanzas, four line stanzas, the traditional format of a poem, four lines. So we have four lines, six stanzas. Imagery, so we learned, talked about it, many different kinds of imagery, but here we have a lot of visual imageries. We have farm, we have rick, uh, we have a dead man lying on the ground. All a lot of imageries are given to us by the poet. Metaphor, bloody hands. Hands are full of blood. In a different way it say hands are guilty. Hands have not been used for a constructive purpose. The hands have been used for a destructive purpose. When the word bloody comes, it always go with negative connotations, negative results, bloody affair, bloody incidents. Even though there are no blood there, but we, if you want to talk about unpleasant incident, we will take bloody incident. Okay, blood, then bloody hands, it's a metaphor, and symbols. Blood is always symbolized death, blood and bloody, and guilt and crime, crime scene, blood. Okay, also Lamestide is a symbol, Lamestide is a festival, festival of uh, youth, festival of uh, enjoyment, festival of harvest. Happy time, Lamestide, and prosperity and youth, and green represent youth. Empty plates, now we are talking about symbols. Empty plates symbolize disappointment, lack of fellowships. And if you come to the elements of sounds, you have rhyming words. The words rhyme, all the six stanzas words rhyme and we also have personification the very title is pers is a personification personify the trees barns and stack and our speaker talk to them and say goodbye to them first to the trees barn and stack let's go to the themes of the poem so you have understood the poem, you know the meaning of the storyline, 
and let's come to the themes of this poem. So one of the theme is tragic outcome of a family conflict. So it happened between two brothers. So it's family, sibling rivalry, rivalry between brothers, rivalry between brothers, tragic outcome of a family conflict, conflict not a happy situation, conflict, denote, things are not in proper order, Tr tragic outcome of family conflict, transitory nature of life, transitory nature of life, transitory nature means things are changing, things are not always as it is, things are changing, brothers were happy, mother was proud of the two sons who is managing the her farm, but things have changed. Transitory nature of life, impulsive nature of youth. Both are young people. Young people are very impulsive. They want to do things at once, at the moment, on the spot. So the results, the murder was a result of impulsive nature of youth and misunderstanding in life. So we also have uh, some kind of hint when you take are Cain and Abel's story and these two brothers' story, there could have been some misunderstanding. But the killing was done as a result of impulsive anger. So four themes in this poem we have. So let's go to practice. Now we have come to understand the poem. Why not we write a paragraph? Simple paragraph. So that is what you are supposed to do always once you understand a poem you write a paragraph. Let's look at this paragraph. As usual, you say, this is a poem written by a houseman. It narrates the story of a tragic death of killing of one brother by the other. The reason is not given directly. It is only hinted. Remember? Remember, the reason is not given why one brother killed the other brother. They both are farmers and the setting of the poem is rural area. As a result of this unexpected situation, the whole family is disturbed. So one incident, whole family is disturbed. The family is shattered. One brother is killed, the other leaving the home, and the mother is alone at home. We feel sympathetic towards the murderer as he is sad to leave his friends, farm, village and mother. As you read the poem, we feel sympathetic towards the murderer. So that is the effect of this poem. The crime is as a result of sudden anger of one brother. And we know that this brother is not a serial killer. He is not a murderer. He is not a gangster to kill his brother to take something. We come to understand the crime is a result of sudden anger of one brother. And we begin to feel sorry for the one who is running away. So let's do a context question in practice. Co context one. She had two sons at rising day. Tonight she'll be alone. From where are these lines taken? Who wrote them? I don't have to say. You can write and you can tell it. Who is referred, who is referred as she? She is the mother. Why she is alone? She is alone today because both sons are not returning home. What are the speakers feeling towards she? He feels sad, sorry for she. Context 2. And Morris amongst the he lies still and my knife is in his side. Question A is very easy. We don't have to look at it. Question B, who is Morris? So it is very clear. Morris is the brother who was killed. What is in his side? Factual information. In his side there was a knife. What is the outcome of the incident? Outcome of the incident. What happened at the end of this incident? One brother 
you can have few answers. One brother was killed, other brother is running away, family is disturbed, mother is alone at home. So we did two contexts. Uh, let's come to the summary of our lesson. We read and we understood the poem Farewell to Barnes, Tack and Tree. We understood the literary features in it. We learned what a ballad is and we wrote a short paragraph about the poem and practices to context. There we are, we have come to the end of our lesson. I hope you learned many things and you enjoyed this lesson. Till we meet again, goodbye, stay safe.